Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. What is the impact of senescent cells on mortality? This paper, Biomarkers of Cellular Senescence and Risk of Death in Humans, looks at the level of protein secreted by senescent cells in people and how these correlate to the risk of dying. The study was authored by a team from the Mayo Clinic. Senescent cells secrete a substance known as senescence-associated secretory phenotype, or SASP. Senescent cells are associated with age and disease states, so, that, so the authors thought that the levels of the chemicals found in SASP, chemokines, cytokines, etc., in the plasma could be used as a predictor of all-cause mortality. In the study, they used the Mayo Clinic Biobank, which has some 57,000 people registered. They randomly selected people who had zero or one chronic disease, so these were quite healthy, and were over 65. After a final review, 1,923 remained as part of the study. These people were then followed for a median of 6.3 years. Five of the biomarkers were strongly correlated with increased risk of death after adjusting for sex, age, race, and the presence of a chronic disease. A C statistic is a measure of how good a fit model is for a set of data. It has values between zero and one where one means the model exactly predicts the data. In this case, using the clinical and demographic data yielded a C statistic of 0.7, while including the senescence biomarker raised this to 0.79, making this a better model. There was a p-value of this of 0.001. And the conclusion is that the biomarkers of senescence can be used as a clinically important predictor of health outcomes in older adults. There were 14 factors which were significant, but these are the top five that they looked at in more detail. GDF15 or growth differentiation factor 15, rage or receptor of advanced glycation endpoints, VEGFA or vascular endothelial growth factor A, PARC, which is also known as CCL18 or chemokine ligand 18, and MMP2, matrix metalloproteinase 2. First, a quick review of senescent cells. So when a cell is damaged or stressed, perhaps with radiation or chemicals, or if it reaches the limit of its replication, it should destroy itself through apoptosis. However, sometimes it will become senescent. In this state, it is not functional, but it is still metabolically active. Many cells in this state will secrete a cocktail of inflammatory and pro-growth factors, which cause other cells in the vicinity to also become inflamed and moves them towards senescence. This cocktail of chemicals is called SASP. The nature of SASP differs between the different senescent cells, but there are some common factors. This is what they were looking for in the study. This graph shows the hazard ratio for the five markers. A hazard ratio is the chance of an event happening compared to a control. So a hazard ratio of one means that there is no difference between the intervention and control. Greater than one means that an event is more likely to happen with the intervention, and less than one in that it is less likely. The top four factors had higher levels in the plasma associated with greater mortality. GDF15 was the most strongly correlated. Indeed, if only GDF15 was used, it was almost as predictive as using all 14 of the markers, which were significant. PARC and MMP2 have previously been associated with mortality and appear to be predictive even in healthy individuals. One protein, RAGE, had a lower expression associated with higher mortality. They do point out that from other studies, the data on RAGE is inconsistent, with some showing that higher RAGE levels are associated with higher mortality and some lower. This graph shows the C statistic for the clinical and demographic data labeled covariates at 0.7, the biomarkers on their own at 0.76, and the combination of the clinical data and the biomarkers together at 0.79. The authors looked at the data by gender. Most of the markers were common, though RAGE and MMP2 were not predictive for females and TNFR was not predictive for males. They wanted to subset the data by race as well, but the population was too homogenous to provide significant results. This was an observational study and showed that higher biomarkers of senescence 
implying a higher burden of senescent cells are associated with a greater risk of death. It does not show causation. However, the takeaway for me was that this was more evidence of the benefits of lowering the senescent cell burden if possible. Thank you for your attention. I hope that you found the video helpful and I wish you all well. Thank you.